Hello everyone and welcome to this Stata video tutorial. My name is Juan and today I'm going to be covering the topic Arima models and the Box Jenkins model selection in Stata. In this video, which is the first of three videos, I'm going to be talking about the identification process, but then I'm going to be covering in the video two, the estimation of the models, and in my video three, the forecasting. So for these tutorials, we are going to be using the consumer price index for the USA, and I'm going to be forecasting the values for the year 2021 using an ARIMA model and selecting the appropriate model with the box shanking model selection criteria. So let's begin then with the ARIMA models. As an introduction, ARIMA is one of the most widely used approaches to time series forecasting. ARIMA stands for Autoregressive Integrated Moving Average. The authors Box and Jenkins in the year 1970 introduced a three steps method to select appropriate models for estimating and forecasting univariate models. Here I included a phrase that says, Let my past predict you my future. The reason for this is because we are working with univariate models. We are not going to be regressing one variable among many other variables, but we are going to be using past values of the variable itself to be able to predict future values. So the box and shanking three stages are identification, the second stage is estimation, and the last stage is diagnostic and forecasting. It is worth to mention that many textbooks have split the stage number three into four steps, so they would do diagnostic in step number three and forecasting in step number four. However, please be aware that this won't change the analysis at all. In here, I have just specified this is what we are going to be covering in this video, and in my other two videos, you will be able to see the rest of the steps. So let's talk about stage one, which is identification. In this stage, we're going to focus on two items. First, in stationary, we're going to check whether our variable is stationary or not, and then we're going to try to identify or determine the order of the autoregressive component, which we identify with a P, then we're going to focus on how many times do we need to difference our variable to achieve stationarity, which would be the order of D. And then we're going to try to identify the moving average component, which is the Q. So those are the three values we're going to try to identify, P, D, and Q. Let's start then with stationarity. We're going to analyze the properties of our variable of interest. And we're going to ask, is this variable stationary? So a series is covariance stationary if the mean and the covariance of the series do not depend on time. A stationary series will have no trend, its variations around its mean have a constant amplitude, and it wiggles consistently. As a note, most economic variables are non-stationary, and they need to be differenced to remove the trend. So to do part A, then, to check for stationarity, we're going to do the following analysis. We're going to start with the graph, then we're going to look at the correlogram, and then we're going to finish the analysis with some formal tests, which in, the, in this particular case are going to be doing the augmented Dicke filler test and the phillips perron test. If our variable is stationary, we're going to be working with an ARMA model. We only need to determine the order of our autoregressive components and the moving average component. We don't need to difference our variable. However, if our variable is non-stationary, then we will be working with an ARIMA model. We will need to difference our variable, and we will have to determine how many times we need to difference our variable to achieve stationarity. Just as a reminder and as a note, most of the economic variables uh, are integrated of order one. This means we will only need to difference our variable one time to achieve stationarity. So let's go into Stata and let's do first part, stationarity. So the first step will be to import our data. We're going to go into File, import excel spreadsheet and we're going to go into browse and select our data in this case i have it in my desktop and if you can see in the first row it includes time and cpa so i don't want this to be um just values as, as rows i want this to be the name of of the columns so i'm going to put this option here import first row as variable names and you can see now that it shows time and CPI as the name of the columns. So that's that's good, we're going to select OK. And in here you see that Stata has produced the, the code. We're going to copy this and we're going to paste it in, in a do file. So that way then you will be able to replicate all the results. The step number two will be 
to set uh, a time variable and the reason for that is because I want to show you that if for example I want to just make a line uh, just a graph of my consumer price index you can see that state is going to tell me that we don't have a time variable set so in order to do that what I'm going to do is I'm going to generate a variable in this case I'm going to just call it month um, it doesn't really matter to be honest you can name it however you wish and then I'm going to type M O F D and in, in brackets I'm going to put time so the, what this is going to do is it's going to generate a new variable I'm going to show you now I'll type browse and what you can see is that Stata has generated this this new variable however it includes all numbers that we don't really know what this is Stata knows what month 576 is but I don't we don't really know what, what that month is so what we need to do then is to um, give some format to this. We're going to type format. We're going to format our variable, which is called month. And I want to type um, TM, which what this is going to do is it's going to tell Stata that those are months. So I'm going to show you now again. And now you can see that Stata has assigned the months to all, to all those numbers that we didn't know what they were, 576, 600, whatever. So the last thing that we will need only to do is, um, well, I would like to drop my old variable. So I'm dropping that old variable. I'm going to rename my variable month and I'm going to rename it, I'll call it time. And the last thing is just type tset time. This is the command that will actually tell Stata that time has to be my, my time variable. And that's all, we are now in a good spot to to start working and checking for stationarity. So the first thing is the graph analysis. We are going to type then TS line CPI. Stata is going to produce the graph. And as you can see in this graph, we clearly see that there's a positive trend. Um, so this is already an indication. We can see a positive trend that this variable is non-stationary. However, we're going to complement this with a correlogram. The command for that is AC. And then I'm going to type CPI. And you can see that here it has produced the autocorrelations of the consumer price index. And we can see that the decay is really slow. When the decay is a really slow pattern, this is another, another sign that our variable is non-stationary. So both with the graph and the autocorrelation, we, can, we, we get hints that this variable is non-stationary. But we're going to complement this with formal test. So in this case, I'm going to start with a Dicky Fuller test. The code for that is a Fuller, a, sorry, a D Fuller. And then I'll type CPI, which is the name of my variable. And then I'm going to type trend, because I want to include a trend in my, in my Dicky Fuller test. And then I'm going to type regress. The reason why I type regress is because I want my test to produce the results and show the values of the constant and the trend. So here we have the values it has produced, the, the augmented Dicky filler test. In here we have the p-value. And in here we'll, we'll start first with this analysis. So if you didn't type regress, you would the Stata wouldn't have produced these results. So the first one is the trend. We can see that the trend, yes, um, has a p-value of 0 0.05. And that means that including the trend, was significant was it it was appropriate to include the trend in this test so you may recall from econometrics courses or statistics where you have seen this where this is an individual significance test so basically the null hypothesis is that the trend is equal to zero that's the null hypothesis if my value is smaller than 0 0.05 we recheck this this hypothesis and then we say that including the trend is significant is different than zero the same goes for the constant. It's slightly over 0 0.05, but that's still fine, including the constant is appropriate, um, at least at the 10% level, and it's very close to the 5% level as well. And here comes the how many degree filler results. So the p-value, again, the null hypothesis of the augmented degree filler test is that my series CPI has a unit root. If the p-value is bigger than 0 0.05, we cannot recheck this hypothesis. Consequently, our series will be non-stationary. 
So as you can see, this value is bigger than 0 0.05, is 0 0.66. So we, can, uh, we cannot reject the null hypothesis that my series has a unit root, therefore my series is non-stationary. We're gonna complement the augmented degree filler test with the phillips perron test. So I'm gonna type PP, E, R, R, O, N, so for Phillips Perron, and then just CPI, and again, I'm going to include the trend, and I'm gonna type regress. Here, Stata has produced the results again. We'll start by checking the individual significance of, of my trend and constant components, and you can see that also the Phillips Perron test is telling me that including the trend and the constant is appropriate, this value, is equal or smaller than 0 0.05. At the 5% significance level, we are accepting. The trend, the constant also is very close to the 5% significance level, so that, that's fine as well. And in here, the null hypothesis of the phillips perron test is the same than the omeni dickey filler test. Okay, so is the null hypothesis is that my series has a unit root. So in this case, we cannot reject that hypothesis because the p-value, is bigger than 0 0.05. Because we cannot reject, we are also confirming then that my series has a unit root and is non-stationary. So what are we gonna do then? We need to work with stationary variables. So what we're going to do then is to test the omeni dickey filler test, but in first differences. So let's check then if, if in first difference, our variable is a stationary. I'm going to type the filler and to tell Stata that you want to work with the first differences, you're going to type D dot CPI. And then because it's in differences, I'm not going to include, not, I'm not going to include a trend, but I'm going to still uh, type the option regress. Now you can see here that the Dickey filler test is telling me the following. The null hypothesis, remember, is that my series has a unit root but we are rejecting this hypothesis because the value is smaller than 0 0.05. At the 5% significance level, we are rejecting the hypothesis of the existence of a unit root. Consequently, my variable in first differences is a stationary. Similarly, we are going to do the phillips perron test. So remember, you type just P Perron, and then you type the name of your variable, which is CPI, and you're going to type regress. And sorry, before I type uh, enter, I, I forgot to put d dot, which this is telling Stata that is the first difference of the variable. I type enter, and the results are the same. Take a look that here uh, the p value is smaller than 0 0.05, so at the 5% significance level, we are also rejecting uh, the hypothesis of the existence of a unit root. So consequently, my series is a stationary in first differences. A very important tip that I'm gonna give you in here is if you check the constant, including a constant also is significant. If you see the value is a small, uh, smaller than 0 0.05, so including a constant is significant, is appropriate. And the reason why I want to highlight this is because when we are estimating our ARIMA models, we will want to include a constant because it's, it's, it's significant. It's, it's uh, the value is smaller than 0 0.05. Suppose that your value was bigger, was like 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, whatever. When you are estimating your ARIMA model, you will not want to include that constant. Moving back to our slides, we have confirmed with the stationarity test that my variable was non-stationary in levels, but applying first differences, our variable is stationary. So we are going to be working with an ARIMA model. Now it's time to determine the values of P and Q. Here I have included the formal representation of the ARIMA model. Here Y is the dependent variable, which in our case is a consumer price index for the USA. It's going to be explained by a constant. The first element here is the autoregressive component, where P is going to be the order of the autoregressive component. This is the moving average component, where Q is going to determine the order of my moving average component, and finally we have the error term. How are we going to identify then the P and the Q? Well, we're going to check for the correlogram. The autocorrelation function is going to determine the Q, the moving average component, while the partial autocorrelation is going to determine P, the order of my autoregressive component. 
So both the autocorrelation and partial autocorrelation function are going to suggest diverse possible models. And the reason why I'm saying suggest is because then we will have to test which of these models is more appropriate for forecasting. I have included a key hint here that is parsimony. It means that adding more variables is going to increase the model fit at the cost of decreasing degrees of freedom. So in simple words, we don't want to add needless variables. We want to keep our model simple. So let's go now into Stata and determine the values of P and Q. To determine P and Q, we are going to produce in Stata the autocorrelation function and the partial autocorrelation function of my variable CPI in first differences. So I'm going to type AC and then D.CPI to use my variable in first differences. And here we see that Stata has produced the autocorrelation of my variable CPI in first differences. The gray area stands for the 95% confidence bands, and we can see that to determine the order of my MA components of Q, we're going to be using all those lags that are exceeding my confidence bands. So we see here that there's only one lag exceeding that confidence band. So this is a possible order of my MA components, of my moving average component, okay? So if we had more, la more lags, we would use more lags, but in this case, there's only one exceeding these bands. So now let's take a look at the order of P. We have determined that Q, the order of Q is going to be one. So now in order to determine P, I'm going to produce my partial autocorrelation function, and again, of my variable in first differences. Recall that the gray area are the 95% confidence band, and any lags exceeding my confidence bands are going to determine the order of my autoregressive component. So we have the first and the second lags are exceeding this confidence band. So then that, that is telling me that there is an R1 and also an R2 component that we should uh, estimate in our models. There's here uh, one value that is very close to the confidence band. However, due to parsimony, I'm not going to be including so many lags in my model. So just to finish and wrap up, we have determined then that there are two possible models that we can estimate, and those are an ARIMA 111. Yes, we're going to be trying to estimate first one model only using one AR component, and then we're going to estimate another model using an ARIMA 211, because we have seen that also the second lag is significant. This is all for this video. We have concluded with stage one of the box shanking methodology, which is the identification stage. In my next video, I estimate the models. And in my last video, I check for the residuals in the model. I conduct some diagnostic tests. And finally, we forecast the most appropriate model. I hope you found this video useful. And I would like to invite you to subscribe to my channel to get access to more videos, more content, more tutorials using Stata, tutorials using eViews, and it's all content uh, related to economics and applied time series. So once again, thank you very much for watching.